We've got Dr. Andrew Thorne, and it's, of course, here on our challenge track. Dr. Thorne is a pioneer and leader in the field of work balance, and his clients include a number of Fortune 500 companies, including over 250 senior leaders from those groups. He uh, flew in from Los Angeles to here to talk to us, and here he is again at the very first TEDx Greenville. Dr. Andrew Thorne. Today is a great day to live, and it's a great day to love, and it's a great day to dream, and I am a dreamer. I'm a pretender, and I'm an expert in self-deception. And I'd like you to join me in a dream a little bit and to think about things just a little bit differently just for a few moments. What I'd really like you to do is rid yourself of the downward spirals that we live in for at least the next 15 minutes and, and come with me to a journey uh, to ascending spirals. I want to give you permission to soar in ascending spirals. And I'd like you to do that with me just for a moment. And first off, I'd like to ask every one of you to please stand up. Can you please stand up with me? Get, take in your right or left hand, whichever one you write with a pen, and I want you to think about the things that you've thought about today, because they're much more important than anything that I'm going to say. Think about the things that you've thought about, if you've got your pen, and write it down. Write it down in your notes. Can you do that for me? I'm going to give you just a few seconds. Just write down your dream, the dream that you've thought about today. Something crazy. Don't tell me that you dreamed about getting a new couch this weekend, or about getting a new home, or a new car. A dream that you've always had, that you've somehow connected with today. Write this dream down. It's very important. Just take a second. It's a dream that perhaps you've never expressed before, out loud. It's something that you've thought about, but you've never done. And when I get a, an, a, an idea that most are done, now I want you to do something even more braver than writing that down. I'm going to count to three, and I want you to say it out loud. Okay? Are you ready? One, two, three. Okay, it's got to be a little more convincing than that. Okay? <laughs> Just a little more convincing. One, two, three. Excellent. I now feel comfortable enough to share with you some of my dreams. There's a reason why they call me Dr. Dreamcoat. This was one of my dreams this past year. I performed the role of Joseph in Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat, and this was my coat that I wore. You may sit down. Thank you very much. I'm not a singer. I'm not a dancer. I'm not an actor. I'd never been in the show before, and in October, I did a three-week run as Joseph in Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat. About, uh, about 20 years ago, 22 years ago, I began dating a woman that's in this room. We'd been dating about two weeks, and she said to me, what do you want from me? <laughs> That's a big question. And I responded in the best way that I knew how at the time. I said, I don't know. What do you want from me? And she said, I want a blonde, curly-headed little boy named Corey. <laughs> and, and the dream began. And as you can see, over the course of the past 22 years, We've dreamed a great life together, and we've dreamed uh, seven children. Seven children and a lot of happiness. And I bring this up, this part of the story up, because this is what's made me an incredible dreamer. Last night we were visiting, and friends asked us, Why, when did you become a dreamer? And I became a dreamer because I had somebody that would support me in my dreams. No matter what they've been, she's always been there with me. And this is a very important thing about our dreams. If we want to dream, we need to have people who will support us in those dreams. And dreaming is an is a interesting topic. And let me, let me share with you just a couple of thoughts about the difference of, of childhood dreams and adult dreams. Not that kind of adult dreams. <laughs> uh, the dreams that we have when we're adults. When we're children, we frequently have dreams that go a little bit like this. I was on a mountaintop. I was looking over the mountain, and I just had this urge to jump, and so I jumped, and I began to fly. And as I flew, I discovered that I was naked. And so when I discovered that I was naked, I flew home and got my clothes on, and I went back out to fly. And when I discovered that I was naked, I couldn't fly anymore because I put my clothes on. And then it was time to go to school, so I went to school. And when I got to school, I started doing my homework at my desk, and then I realized I was naked again, and I didn't know what to do. 
isn't that the most amazing dream you've ever heard? And we would tell that dream to people, and they would understand. They would say, yeah, that's a weird dream. I had one just like that. Imagine going into your workforce or your place of work and sharing that dream today. You'd be in big trouble. And so here's how our adult dreams go. Our adult dreams go something like this. I'm really busy right now. I've got this big project that I'm working on. I'm going to work at it for a little while, and I can see the end, the light at the end of the tunnel. And when that's done, then I'll have some time to rest and to catch up and to recover, and then life won't be crazy anymore. That's a dream that we have as an adult. And what's wasted here is that as a child, we have this vivid imagination, and we dream about so many things, and we have no power to make them real. But as an adult, we have these dreams that are pointless, but we have all of the power to make them real. And let me tell you why I think that is. As a child, there was a question that everybody asked us. Every time they saw us, they asked us this question. Do you remember what it was? It was, who do you want to be when you grow up? And so that question immediately threw us into a dream. It threw us into a world where we thought and we imagined that we could be whatever we want. We could be superheroes. We could be uh, fire officers or policemen or we could be soldiers or, or teachers or we could be whatever we wanted to be. And then we graduated from high school. And everybody asked us a question, a new question. The new question was, what do you do? And that question is a dream killer because it frames us in a box. Personally, I refuse to be identified by what I do because it doesn't define me. It's merely the way I spend some of my time during each day, but it is not who I am. But this is the question, and today as you're networking, I bet you were asked this question a hundred times. And for a guy like me, it's really hard to answer. What do you do? Oh, I dream. I'm an expert in self-deception. What does that mean? It means that I'm uncovering constantly what's going on around us in such a way that I can see things as they really are. And when I can see things as they really are, then I have the power to do something about it. But until that point, I cannot. And, this is, and so I think, what is the new question? What is the question that we can hear that will help us break out of that what-do-you-do mode? And it's, a, it's the same question that we were asked before. It's who are you, or what, what, who do you want to be when you grow whole? We're not going to grow, we're not, we're going to grow old, but we're already grown up, so the question is, who do you want to be when you grow whole? And that's a great question. Once I was working with a man by the name of Marshall Goldsmith. Maybe some of you have heard of Marshall, he's a well-known author. And, and, I, and I had a meeting with Marshall in his home, and I was waiting for him. He had asked me to meet with him and asked me to bring a resume, and I was waiting for him at his dining room table with my resume on his table. He comes bouncing into the room, singing like a rhinestone cowboy, walks up to me, sits down next to me, puts his hands on my knees, and says, Hi, I'm Marshall Goldsmith. I'm famous for being the most successful coach in the world. What are you famous for, Andrew? <laughs> that was the most uh, horrific who are you moment I've ever personally faced. Now think about that for a minute. What makes you unique? What would you answer? How would you answer somebody who had so much power, so much confidence, was really literally known by Forbes magazine, they had ranked him as the number one coach in the world, was literally known as that, and he says, who are you? How would you answer him? Do you have an answer? The answer to this question is much more difficult to give than what do you do? When we ask what do you do, it's real simple. Oh, I'm a loan officer, I'm a real estate agent, and it's done. But who are you is much deeper. And that's, that's a point of reference that we really sometimes feel a little bit challenged to answer because there's so much packed into it. And I'd like you to, to participate with me again just for a moment. I'd like you to stand up once again. I'd like you to look to the person next to you, and I'd like you to say to them, what makes you unique? Give it a shot. They're not going to remember. Trust me. <laughs> just tell them, what is it that makes you unique? Thank you. What? Thank you. You may sit down again. 
How did that feel? Let me just have a couple of quick answers. How did that feel? Exciting. Exciting? What else? Intimidating? Uneasy? Silly? Teachable moment? Why is it why is it why is it all of that? I understand that. And why is it all of that? Why are we so guarded that we don't want to say who we are? Why is it that I, as a professional, a doctor, a doctor of organizational psychology, would be afraid to put on my amazing Technicolor dream coat and twirl it for you? I mean, why would I be afraid to do that? Why would I be afraid to say to my client, I can't come this weekend because I'm going to be Joseph and Joseph in the amazing Technicolor dream coat, and I'm going to sing and dance? That's who I am. It's what I love. Why don't I want to say that? Why does it make me feel uneasy to say that? Because our society is not programmed for that. And so this is how we need to change the world, is we need to become resistant to the question, what do you do? And we need to begin to answer who we are. And who we are is not only defined by what we do. It can be defined by what we do. It's certainly a part of it. It's, an achie- it's the achievements that define what we do, but it's who we become through the process of achieving those things that define who we are. So it's not incredible to say, hey, this is what I do, as long as we define it by who I am. That's where the magic comes. And that's where we begin to be able to dream, because who I am is where I dream. You know, when I became, uh, when I became Dr. Dreamcoat, I just had finished my PhD. And my brother called me on the phone and he said, what are you going to do now? And I said, I'm going to be Joseph in Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat in one year. You know what he did? He laughed at me. <laughs> he laughed right on the phone, right in my ear. Four months later, he called me on the phone and he said, I've been dreaming with one of my friends and we're thinking about putting together a production company to do theater in our town, which we have very little of. And we'd like to start with Joseph in the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat. <laughs> Would you like to help us reach our dreams by, and we'll help you reach yours? And we became great partners in that process and it was a wonderful thing. Dreaming is, is, is critical to help us move things to the next level. That's what we're all looking for here. We want to figure out how can we go to the next level. And that journey to the next level is critical because it's, it really, after a while, if you've ever had a weight loss program and you start to lose some weight and you get to that last five pounds, it's pretty hard. It's pretty hard to do. And as we dream, our dreams are that we really can do that. And so sooner or later, as we reach and as we dream, we're really thinking about how can we become perfect? Perfect is not flawed and unblemished. Perfect is whole and complete and fully finished. And that's why the question, the new question, is who do you want to be when you grow whole? We're all aging, we're going to get old, but we want to grow whole. That perfection, that perfecting process comes from planning and thinking, and a process that I call planning your perfect day. Your perfect day is different for you than it is for me. Mine starts at 4.30 in the morning and ends at 10.30, regardless of what time zone I'm in. That's when my perfect day begins. And I have outlined throughout the day the kinds of things that I want to spend my time on. The way I did that was I sat down and I thought, okay, how would I want to spend my time? An exercise that I often do is, what do you love doing? Followed with the question, how do you spend your time? Always, they're not aligned. People are spending their time over here, they're not spending the time what they love doing. And that's what I do. I plan my day well in advance. I create a template that says, this is the perfect day. Here's how I'll spend my time. I love to write. I have seven children. I like to spend some time with them. I like to see my wife every once in a while. I have clients that I like to work with. I like to sing. I like to dance. I like to do sports. I like to run. I like to bike. I like to swim. I like to do all of these things. How can I fit them into one day? And if I don't fit them into one day, uh, then, then I, I, I need to have a template that works for me. And when I fit them into that one day, it's a perfect day. And so every day, I strive for that perfect day. It's a beautiful thought, and it works. Do you know, because I planned it that way, most of my days are now perfect. Again, that doesn't mean they're not blemished or flawed. It just means that they happen the way I want them to happen instead of the way that the world wants them to happen for me. And that's what I think is most amazing about this process. I started, or I missed, because I was a bit amped up with this slide right here that says, I hope I wish, I dream. Let me tell you what I hope and I wish and I dream for you. I hope that as you stood up and said, this is my dream and this is what makes me unique, that you began to sense your strengths. 
that you began to get a feeling of what kind of contributions you can make to your community. I wish that you will connect that now. You've met some people here today, that you will connect your strengths together and that you will create a powerful network of people who are dreaming all the time and who are living life in the most perfect way they can possibly live it. And then I dream that somehow we will take what's happened here today out into the community and build something better, even a beautiful city. That's my dream for you. Thank you very much.